if we want to compute an inverse Laplace transform, we have to do a complex integration along the Bromwich line. But how do we compute this integral? We want to use the theorem of residues, of course, if we can. So we have to close our contour. But how can we do that? In this video, you will see the contour which often works, and you will learn the conditions under which it works. So what do we do? Uh, we want to compute uh, integral of the Bromwich line LR of some function capital F of S times its power ST. So let's uh, call this, this, this complete function G of S, just to ease the notation a bit. We have some positive A, we have our LR, so how do we close it? Well, we go to the left in the complex plane, we put L use and L down, L up and L down, until the imaginary axis, and then we make a semicircle CR. That's how we will often do this. When can we do this? Well, suppose capital F is analytic uh, for the real parts of S smaller than I, except that the finite number of singularities, so you will have some poles inside. And suppose furthermore uh, that your capital F of S is bounded by some MR on uh, L up, L down and CR, so your capital F of S has to be bounded. Notice we ha now have the capital F, and it has bounded by some constant MR, which has to go to zero. In that case, you can apply the theorem of residues. The uh, integral C total G of S GS will be the 2 pi r times the sum of the residues. And your integral along LR, the one you want to find, will be 2 pi r times the sum of the residues minus the integral with respect to the other parts. Now, of course, you want the this lot of part here, this part, to vanish for in limit r to infinity. Uh, yes, this vanishes, r goes to infinity, but why? Well, for the L up and the L down, we can use an ML estimate. On the L up and L down, we can parameterize S equals xi plus or minus i times r for uh, xi between 0 and a. And it means that our the norm of a function g of s, f of s times e to the power st, smaller equal than, well, capital F was bound by some MR, and for e to the power st we have uh, t times psi plus or minus ir. And now this r is going to blow up, occurs in e to the power t times i times r, and the norm of that, t is real, r is real, the norm of e to the power i times t times r, times r is just one for all r. So the r vanishes there. We are only left with e to the power psi times t, plus psi is at most a, and a is some constant, so that doesn't harm us, which yields us a mr times e to the power a t. And then we use the ML theorem, norm of g of s bounded by mr times e to the power a t, then the norm of integral is bounded by this mr times e to the power a t times the length of the integration interval, which is just a, some finite number a. So if we take the limit uh, to infinity, we get zero over here, which means that in the limit r to infinity, the integral over l up and l down also vanishes. That's the first part. Now we also have to get rid of the integral along this circular arc. So how are we going to do that? I have a neat little trick for that. Uh, we want to be able to use the lemma of Jordan for that. And we can, but the lemma for of Jordan can only be used for the semicircles in the upper half plane. So we do a substitution. Z equals e to the power minus i times pi over 2 times s. So we uh, rotate our circle over minus 90 degrees, or uh, that equals minus i s, or i times z equals s. So what do we get? Instead of the circle, which is in the uh, left of the plane, we get the circle c r tilde in the upper half plane. Now what do we get for our integral? Uh, integral along CR of f times e to the power s t ds becomes the integral along the circle in the upper half plane. Capital F of i z, which is still bounded by uh, mr going to zero. And here we instead of e to the power s t, we get e to the power i times t times z, where t is positive. This t over here is positive uh, times uh, d i z. So we can just take the i in front to get the dz. That doesn't bother us. So what happens, uh, we can apply the lemma of Jordan, uh, the uh, uh, f is bound by some mr going to zero, which means that if r goes to infinity, 
this lava integral goes to zero, which means that the original integral along CR goes to zero. So how do we compute the uh, integral along LR? It's uh, if your function vanishes fast enough on CR and L, L up and L down, then you can use the theorem of residues that integral along LRGS equals 2 pi r times the sum of the residues, and this part is going to vanish if uh, L is going to, if r is going to infinity.